Hi, everybody, and welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We're live in East Nashville right now at Three Sirens with Bree Kennedy. Bree, it's great to see you again. It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah we did the thing in New York, and uh, yes. the New York studio, as you know, like many other places, did go the way of the dinosaur during the COVID, but now uh, here we are. We're here in Nashville right now. It's great to see you in your backyard. It feels like a lifetime ago, but yes, truly, I live right up the street, so we are, we are very close. It's good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, you two. Um, we're about to do three songs today. Two of them are from a forthcoming project. The details about that project are to be to be determined. They're forthcoming, and uh, we're also going to hear a fan favorite. What do you want to do first? Uh, I'm going to play a song off of my last album, Note to Self, called Nothing Compares. And I wrote this song with my dear friend Sarah Troy in the time in which we won't speak of um, over Zoom. And we wrote it about basically how much time we were spending uh, on our phones looking at dog videos and everybody else's life and what it would be like if we spent half the amount of time giving everybody digital flowers and watering our own garden. So this is Nothing Compares. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Right. Excellent. Thank you, Bree. Thank you, Hadley. This sounds great in this room. Hope you guys are having fun. I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time. Yeah. Good. 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 Um, so, have you been able to do anything in your own life to um, to reduce the distraction of the amount of just digital hmm. bombardment that we're under all the time to make we had a, we had a conversation with Rodney Crowell earlier this week about um, not being distracted. He had an incident in the 1970s where TV came on, a big news thing happened, and it just absolutely broke the spell. He was right in the mm. middle of writing what became his biggest song, and the spell got broken, and he felt like he never finished the third verse, and it was kind of not great and not ever wow. finished, really. Um, are you able to remove those distractions or any strategies that you've found to keep that stuff out of your life so you can... Keep yeah. that spell going when you're when you're writing and and creating. I feel like I'm experiencing that shift right now. So that's a really good question. I mean, during 2020, you know, I I had a pup. I got a pup, as a lot of people did, and I would just force myself to go outside and go for a walk. And so I started doing that. If I found myself like going in my phone and getting lost in it. I would just make sure to be like, I'm putting my phone down. I'm going to go out with my dog. Um, and so he definitely was a great distraction in a good way. Um, and now I feel like, especially with being on the road again, being busy, I have to post all the time or I feel that pressure. Um, and so I really have to implement like good social media etiquette to stay present. Um, and there's nothing better than playing live. It really keeps me present too. So still in progress. Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, everything, all the yeah. time. We're progress, not perfection. Yeah. Um, we So you said that one that we just heard was a co-write, and I know I think I'm going to nail this segue because the next one we're going to listen to is the Lori, co the Lori co-write. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, what was it like working with Lori to, to create the song that we're about to hear? Oh, it was awesome. It was pretty amazing. I was in uh, Napa Valley, which is paradise, obviously. Yeah. and. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody who can remember their time in Napa Valley. Um, I went there for a wedding. It was my boyfriend's brother's wedding. And truly, it was beautiful. And I like cleared my whole schedule. It was right before I went on tour with Joy Lodakin. And I just knew I needed like time away. Um, but I kept that co-write, of course, because Lori McKenna is one of my favorite songwriters of all time. But it was over Zoom. So I have like all these beautiful vineyards behind me. But I look like a wreck. I'm super hungover, and I'm just like stressed. It would be weird if you were not a wreck. And yeah, it if and I was no just like, happened. oh, I've had a spa day. And <laughs> um, but she gets on Zoom, and she's in a Carhartt beanie, and yeah, it was just really natural. And we get to talking, and she's like, yeah, I have five boys, and I'm like, you're amazing. Like you're so deeply cool, and you're just so relaxed. I'm in Napa, and I'm like <laughs> freaking out about my life. And anyway, she's she was just like, yeah, you know, you just figure it out. Like life's always crazy. You just treat your kids like humans, and you keep them alive. And you, like, that's it. Um, do you have any kids? And I was like, no. Before I have kids, I need to figure my life out and like remember that I left my laundry in the washer. And like, <laughs> and then I think the phrase "before I have a daughter" slipped out of my mouth, and she caught it. And she was like, most people say "before I have kids," and you said "before I have a daughter." And I went on to sing, you know, in real time, I write a lot about like nostalgic feelings as a songwriter. And I felt like this is the first time um, I wrote about where I was at like right now in my life. And Lori really helped me uh, pull that out of me. And it was a therapy session. Um, but this song is coming out next Friday. And uh, it means a lot to me because obviously there's nothing like a wedding to make you think about your future. <laughs> and um, it made me reflect on the fact that maybe as a woman, I wish I would have had done more or would do more before I have kids. Um, and especially as a woman, I want to do more for the world as a woman for a little girl. Um, so I didn't realize all that pressure. And I got to see my mom and my grandma just last week and put them in the music video. And um, it just means a lot to me. Um, I really love this song. Yeah. Garden, the kind I have to walk. 
Let's talk about paper kites, and you're yeah. out like now, potentially right after the session to go. You're you're hitting the road for a while. Uh, can you tell us about some of the upcoming highlights that you're excited about? Yeah, uh, tomorrow we leave first thing in the morning. We're going to Boston, and we're going to New York and uh, DC, and then back here in Nashville, and then we get to go tour with them through Canada and the West Coast. So I'm gonna be away from my dog for a little bit, but. <laughs> We're really excited. Um, Paper Kites asked me to join, and it was a treat because I'm a big fan of them. Um, and, you know, this whole year it's just been, like, not knowing what shows or opportunities are going to come uh, after the last two years. So it just feels like the perfect way to end 2022. Um, and I signed with my label this year and get to put out an album next year and try those songs out on tour. So it just feels... Everything feels really, really right right now for the first time in the past two years, so it's great. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, do you ever consider bringing the pooch out on the road with you and just, just uh, ground <laughs> yeah. travel and no way travel <laughs> and just tour with the dog? I do. I actually, I grew up with big dogs my whole life, and I specifically was like, I'm going to get a travel pup. And he's a grandpa, and he hates traveling. It's his worst nightmare. So he's a studio <laughs> dog here. He basically has a cigar, and he's just like, good luck, kid. Like, that's his whole <laughs> MO. So I wish he could come with me, but it makes it makes me miss home a lot more, which is good. Is he decent at avoiding cables and mic stands and such? Is he, can he be totally. in the studio and navigate he's like, a cat. like a cat? Yeah. He's like a cat. I come home, he's on the counter. 
He like <laughs> walks the line between the couch, you know, just like on the top of the couch. He's very stealth. He's, very, he's a percher. He's a percher, and he gets away with a lot. Good. Yeah. Good. I mean, yeah, gotta let Grandpa get away with. <laughs> <laughs> gotta let Grandpa do anything he wants. Yeah. Uh, we'll have uh, excellent show tomorrow. Have an excellent Thank show. Thank you. Hall of Williamsburg the day after tomorrow, I think. Yeah, Williamsburg. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, and travel safely between all those dates, please, and come see us again. We'll do, Absolutely. We'll just Thanks for having me. Forever. I plan to do this for my whole career, so we'll just yes. keep doing it. Uh, let's run into each other in another two years. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's not make it two years. Yeah. Man. Let's just do it, you know. A couple of months. In Sweden. You know, in Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll meet you there with Old Sea Brigade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's still one more song coming up in this session. What do you want to do third today? Uh, I'm going to play a song called Ribbon. I released it a few weeks ago, and I wrote this with um, two friends in L.A. about our limited beliefs and how we're the only people that can stand in the way of that. And um, sometimes you just need a reminder and you need to let go a little bit. Ready? How do you break a chain that's so ingrained in everybody? How do you learn to cut the ties without compromising you? You thought you'd be by now who you should be by now. Where you put the time it took for you to go into yourself? How do you keep it from unraveling when you're tied to someone else? It's history. A part of me by now I couldn't choose a piece to lose if I tried Thank you, Hadley. Thank you. Thank you. Um, best of luck on the new record. We'll stay tuned for when the details are available about when it's coming out, what it's called, etc. Awesome. And uh, travel safely. We'll see you somewhere, somewhere cool. I'll see you in Sweden. Probably. Thank you, guys. All right. Till next time. <laughs>